Welcome back to the School of Obedience, always good to be found in the Word of God. My name is Don Pullen. This is the fourth and final part of the four-part teaching of Christ, the Law, and the Prophets. If you haven't checked out the other three, they're linked up in the cards here. Please check them out. Very important. Before we get into today's teaching, I'd just like to ask you, please, read Matthew chapter 5 in the morning, Matthew chapter 6 in the afternoon, Matthew chapter 7 in the evening. Read it audibly, read it with family and friends. This is important for us to get into our hearts because these are the foundational teachings of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let's get into today's teaching. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 20, Jesus says, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wow. So first of all, what is righteousness? Righteousness, simply put, is being right. Not right in an arrogant way, right in a pure sense. It's being right before God. When you stand before God, you are right. You are righteous. No sin, no evil. Nothing vile in you. You are right. The best way I can define it with the verse is Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And that is basically righteous living in a nutshell. Okay, obviously it goes a level higher because for us now, righteousness comes through Christ. But basically, in Christ, that is who you are. You are right before God, in right standing with God. I hope that's simple enough. But then he says here, your righteousness must surpass. He doesn't say the Romans. He doesn't say the ancient Jews. He says the scribes and Pharisees. So first, Let's find out who these people are. The scribes were a member of a learned class in ancient Israel through the New Testament times who studied the scripture and they served as people who were copyists, editors, teachers, and jurists. These people would study the scripture, the law, the holy law of God. They'd study it, present it to people. They were, can I put it this way, masters of the law. These men were given to studying the law and they were masters of the law. And then the Pharisees. Who are the Pharisees? The Pharisees were the most expert and the most accurate expositors of the Jewish law. The, 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 the Pharisees again mastered the law but taught it to the people. The one thing that the Pharisees did that was a bit off was that they added certain rules to the law to put heavy burdens on people. But anyway, these were the Pharisees. Basically, let's say they were, the, they were teachers of the law. They taught the law to the people. What people didn't understand, they went to the Pharisees. So, those are the scribes and Pharisees. Now, Jesus says, I mean, it's brilliant. They knew the law. They knew what God said. They taught the people. They mastered it. But Jesus says your righteousness must surpass, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. What is the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Matthew 23, verse 1 to 7. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that you must observe and do, but don't ye after their works. Don't copy them. Do what they're saying, but don't do what they do. For they say and they do not. They bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, but all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments 
and loved the uppermost rooms and feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, don't be like them. The sad reality is, a lot of people want to be like them. We give ourselves these lofty titles, and you see in the modern church, the, the leaders, okay, people with heavy titles, apostles, archbishop, bishops, you know, overseer, pastor, first lady, first man, president and overseer, and they sit in the front, they sit with a special chair. Everybody else got the hard wooden base chair. You're sitting on the hard pews, but they've got their, their high up position. They sit in the front because I'm the leader, and they're sitting in their, 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 their comfortable, soft chair, and they sit in a position where everybody can see them, and they love to be called by these wonderful titles. They advertise their works because they want to be seen of men. You even hear some of them preaching and saying, I, last week, I did this. Last week, I gave this. Last week, I prayed for ten people. Last week, I cast out five demons. Last week, I gave to the poor. I give. You need to learn from me, exactly like these people. And that is the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. It is self-righteous. How does this tie in with the law and the prophets? Because that was the problem with people who observed the law. Because they were observing the law, they would then boast in their understanding and observance of the law. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on. Let's see these people's righteousness a little bit more. Listen to the parable here. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not as other men. I'm not an extortioner, unjust. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not even as this publican here. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of everything that I possess. And the publican standing afar off, standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself will be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. I'm blessed because I'm good. I'm blessed because I help people. I'm blessed because I fast ten days in a week. I'm blessed because I'm so humble. I'm blessed because I give to the poor. I'm blessed because I pray so much. That is the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. So what righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Let's look at Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 31. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent forth to be a appropriation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles only. Also, seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. You're made righteous in Christ. It's that simple. You see, the publican believed in God. He believed in Christ. 
He says, I'm a sinner. And that's the first thing as a believer is to acknowledge your sin. When you come up and you're standing next to Christ, Peter says, go away from me because I'm a sinful and wretched man. When you're standing with Christ, you see the purity of Christ and you see your sinfulness. But now, instead of seeing judgment and wrath, you see grace and mercy. Righteousness, true righteousness is in Christ. To be humble, to be given to obedience, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. True righteousness is in Christ. The righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees is self-righteousness. I did this. I, I, I went here. You wrong somebody. You offend somebody. And the person says, I'm not talking to you anymore because what you've done, you've wronged and you've hurt me. You then turn around and say, God is moving junk from my life. Instead of looking at your part, you're bringing down the person. The righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, true righteousness is Christ. Come to Christ, surrender. By faith, believe in the work and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Humble yourself. And that is righteousness that exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. God bless you. Thank you for watching this. I'd just like to remind you, this is the fourth part to a four-part teaching on Christ, the law, and the prophets. If you haven't checked out the other three parts, I'll link them in the card up above. Please check them out. Subscribe to the channel if, you've not, if you have not. Please leave a like on the video. Hit that like button. It's important. It helps promote the channel. Share the video with as many people as you can. And not forgetting the bell icon. Click on that bell icon so you are notified as soon as new teachings are uploaded. In the description below, there's a link to our Patreon page. Please click on that link. Head over to the Patreon page if you'd like to support us and participate with us in the work and the ministry that we do. You can choose a tier level of your choice. God bless you and thank you for that. And remember, as true disciples of Christ, we learn, we practice, and we teach, because that's the only way to do it. Amen. See you in the next one.